So like I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, for the past few years, I have been using Phantom LUTs pretty much any time when I've needed to do any sort of color grading. And in this one, I basically wanted to show you why I actually love them so much. And I'm gonna talk about my process of using them while I'm filming, as well as my workflow with them later in the editing stages when I'm color grading and resolve. This video isn't sponsored, but if you are interested in picking up a set of Phantom LUTs for yourself, there is gonna be an affiliate link in the description that you can use to support the channel. And you can also use my code George for 15% off at checkout. So first of all, before I even get into the color grading stages of a video, I actually use Phantom LUTs to monitor my footage while I'm filming. And that makes it a lot easier to get a good looking exposure for my images. And in my experience, these Phantom ones look a lot better than most of the built-in conversion LUTs in most of the monitors and cameras that I've personally used. So I've got them loaded into my external monitor, which is a Feel World LUT 6. And that way I can use them to preview what my image is going to look like later when I drop it into Resolve and start color grading. And I can essentially expose my footage based on that. And I also have them loaded directly into my Sony FX30 because I don't always carry an external monitor with me, but I still want to have a good conversion from S-Log3. So there are two categories of Phantom LUTs that you can pick up. You've got the Ari looks and the film looks. And one more thing to mention is that there are different sets of Phantom LUTs that you can pick up based on what camera brand and camera model you're using. So you gotta make sure to pick up the pack that matches the camera that you've got. So now we're gonna look at a few clips in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna try to have the camera model as well as the color settings for each of these somewhere on screen. So this is what the footage looks like coming straight out of the camera in log. And in order to get this looking a little bit more normal, you would normally use a color space transform, which gets it looking like this. And these are the settings that I've got for this specific clip. Now, after converting it, it looks brighter than I would want it to, which is something that I usually do. I film most of my footage to be brighter than what I want it to end up looking like in the final project. So in order to fix that, I go into a node before the conversion and I use the HDR wheels in order to bring down exposure. And this is something that I have been doing more and more recently. I feel like the HDR wheels give me more control over exposure than the regular color wheels and it just feels more intuitive. But in order for everything to work correctly, I also need to make sure to map the HDR wheels to the correct color space. So in this case, that's gonna be sgamut3.cine in the slog3 gamut. And then one more adjustment I did to this clip is adding a slight curve to add some contrast, which looks like this. So this is what we started with, and this is what the clip looks like after some of those adjustments. So now if I flip over to a different version of this clip, which I set up with Phantom LUTs, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So to start off, I applied the Jamaica Phantom LUT to the footage, and this is what it looks like straight off the bat. Then I did pretty much the same exact exposure adjustment with the HDR wheels. And I also added a curve to add some contrast. And this is what the image looks like with all of those applied. So if we go full screen, this is what the log image looks like. This is what it looks like with a phantom LUT and a few adjustments applied like exposure and some contrast. And if we flip back to the version with the color space transform, this is what that looks like. So this is the CST, this is the phantom LUT, CST, phantom LUT. And if I go ahead and put these side by side, again, we're gonna go full screen. Left is the CST version, right is the Phantom LUT version. You should be able to notice that there is quite a bit of a difference. And in my personal opinion, the version on the right, which is the Phantom LUT version, looks a lot better. The colors are more pleasing, the highlight roll off is just nicer, and pretty much all of the other settings, except for the CST and the Phantom LUT, are the exact same but the image looks a little bit different on each side because of how the gamma curve for the phantom LUT affects the footage and also the colors. Okay, so here's another clip, again, starting off with a phantom LUT. In this case, again, it's the Jamaica phantom LUT. This is what it looks like straight off the bat. Then an exposure adjustment with the HDR wheels and then an adjustment to the contrast using the curves. And this is what we ended up with. This is the log image and this is the image with a phantom LUT and a few adjustments. Just to compare, this is what the image looks like with a CST and the exact same adjustments. This is what it looks like with the Phantom LUT. CST, Phantom LUT. 
Again, side by side, you can see a huge difference. And in my opinion, the version with the Phantom LUT just looks a lot better. Okay, here's one more clip. Again, starting with a Phantom LUT. In this case, it is the neutral LUT. This is what that does. Then a slight exposure adjustment with the HDR wheels, and then a node to add some contrast using the curves log image. And this is what it looks like with a Phantom LUT and a few adjustments. If we flip over to the version with the CST, this is what that looks like. Phantom LUT, CST, Phantom LUT, CST. I think the Phantom LUT looks a lot better. And honestly, with just these adjustments, I would say that this image is perfectly usable for a final project, but you could obviously do a lot more to it to get it looking even better and more stylized, but that's really up to you. Here's another example. And again, starting with a Phantom LUT. In this case, it is the Utopia Phantom LUT. This is what it gives us as a starting point. And then here's what we get with an HDR adjustment to the exposure, log, graded. Comparing it to the CST version, as you can see, the CST version just looks a lot more average and in my opinion, just not as pleasing. Whereas the Phantom LUT has a lot more character, even though I know that's kind of a buzzword, but that's pretty much the best way I can explain it. And again, just with two nodes, one of them being the Phantom LUT and another one being a slight exposure change, I would say that this is a completely usable image. Whereas if we go to the CST version, this feels like it's lacking something and needs a little bit more work to actually get to a point where it looks nicer. So that's why I prefer using the Phantom LUTs. Here is another clip, again, just two nodes. One of them is the Phantom LUT. In this case, it's the Ice Blue Phantom LUT. This is what that looks like. And then a slight exposure adjustment. If we go full screen, log image, graded. Comparing it to the CST, this is the CST. This is the Phantom version. Again, if we put them up side by side, you're gonna notice that the Phantom LUT version just looks like it's more complete than the CST version. And it's not like the CST version looks bad by any means, but it just looks like it needs more work done to it. Whereas with the image on the right, which is the Phantom LUT version, I am completely fine just using this as is in a video. Next clip, and again, this is a simple three node setup. And if we just turn on the node with the LUT, which in this case is the Utopia LUT, this is what that looks like. Then we have a node for exposure adjustment. And in this case, I actually brought up the exposure contrary to most of the time when I have to bring it down. And then in this node here, I've also added a little bit of saturation. And in my mind, this image looks pretty much done. And then if we compare it to the version with the CST, this just doesn't look completely right. And to me, this looks more stylized, but also just more usable. CST, Phantom LUT. All right, here's another clip, and this one has more going on because it just needed a little bit more adjustment. But again, to start off with, I applied a Phantom LUT. In this case, it is the neutral one, which is the one that I use most often because the other ones have slightly different color characteristics and they don't always fit the situation. Whereas the neutral one is pretty much a great starting point regardless of what clip you're working with. So if we turn it on, this is the starting point then an exposure adjustment with the HDR wheels. And then before that, I also have a white balance adjustment here done using the offset in the primary color wheels because without it, it looks just way too blue. So this is how it corrects that. And then we also have a node to add more contrast and using the curves, this is what that looks like. So this is the log image. This is the graded image. And if we compare it to the version with the CST, again, everything else is the same. This one is just using the CST instead of the Phantom LUT. And here is the version with the Phantom LUT. Comparing them side by side, you're gonna notice that the version with the Phantom LUT, which is the one on the right, looks darker. And again, that's just because of the way that the gamma curve for Phantom LUTs affects the footage. But pretty much all of the settings are exactly the same across these two. So this clip is kind of similar to the previous one. And again, we're gonna start with a Phantom LUT. We're gonna use the neutral Phantom LUT again, but this is a LUT that's meant for a different color profile. So this is what it does to the image. And then if we enable the node with the exposure adjustment, then again, we have a node for some white balance adjustment just to make it less blue. And then one last node for some contrast using the curves. This is the log image. This is what it looks like graded. And this is the version with the CST. Again, side by side, you're gonna notice that the version with the CST, which is on the left, looks different both color and contrast wise. And I'm not gonna say that one of these looks overwhelmingly better than the other, but I personally just prefer the look that the Phantom LUT version gives me. So here's another clip. And in this one, we have more going on in terms of nodes. 
Again, we are starting off with a LUT, which in this case is the Utopia. And again, this brings the image to a point where I would be completely happy using it as is. But then when we select the node with the exposure adjustment and we turn this on, we can bring down the exposure a little bit using the HDR wheels. Then I have a node for white balance adjustment again. And in here, I haven't used the offset, but instead I've used the temperature slider to just put more blue into the image. And then in this node here, I have increased the saturation just a little bit. And then this final node is for contrast adjustments using the curves again. Here's what the log image looks like, and here's what it looks like graded. Then comparing it to the version with the CST, everything else is the same, but this version is using the CST, and this version is using a phantom LUT. If we put them side by side, the CST version is on the left, the phantom version is on the right, and you can clearly notice some differences in both contrast and color, but I personally think that the phantom LUT version just looks better and more buzzword cinematic. And even though for this clip there are a few more nodes that I've set up, this is still a really, really simple color grading workflow. And here is the final clip that we're going to look at. This is following pretty much the exact same node structure as the previous one. So we're starting off with a LUT, which in this case is the neutral one. Then here's the node with the exposure adjustments using the HDR wheels, bringing down the exposure a little bit. Then I've also set up a node in case I need to do any sort of white balance adjustments, which in this case isn't necessarily needed, but I could make this image cooler. I actually think I'm not going to do it for this one. That looks completely fine to me. Then in this node here, I have added a little bit of saturation again with the normal saturation slider in the color wheels tab. And finally, adding contrast with the curves. This is the log image, this is the graded image, and this is the version with the CST. Looking at them side by side, again, everything else is the exact same, except the one on the right is using a phantom LUT, the one on the left is using a CST. And in this clip specifically, the difference isn't as huge, but there is still a slight difference if you look at the highlight roll off on the bright side of the face and the color of the hair. So that is how I usually approach color grading with phantom LUTs. And obviously, depending on the clip, the process could be simpler or more difficult, but it really depends on what I'm working with. To me personally, these make the whole color grading stage much faster and easier, and I would absolutely consider them to be one of the best investments that I have made into my post-production workflow so far. So whether you need a good starting point for the rest of your color grade or there's a project with a really short turnaround time that you need to finish, I think that phantom LUTs are definitely something you should consider.